Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 1,459. When everyone else is going in one direction, you need to explore a different path. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah. I am revved up and so excited to share with you today a very special guest, Eleanor Segura, who will be calling in from Los Angeles, California. Eleanor Segura is the digital production editor at Automobile Magazine. She's been with the publisher for almost six years, contributing as a writer, photographer, and sampling some of the coolest rides around. Plus, she's the only female writer on staff there at Automobile. Automobile Magazine's mantra of no boring cars brings enthusiasts a variety of inspiration through latest news, car reviews, long-term updates, design, feature cars, and opinion. You'll find videos, auto show reports, and much more in their print magazine and on their digital platform. I'll be back in just a minute to talk with Eleanor, but first, a word from our valued sponsors who make this show possible. Winter's here and things can get a little messy. Rain, snow, salt, mud, dirt, and everything Mother Nature comes up with can hurt the finishes of your vehicles, both inside and out. I'm not worried, though, because I've used Covercraft car covers on my rides since 1975. Today, Covercraft offers you a total solution to vehicle protection. They make the best-fitting, finest-made car covers in the world and offer a wide variety of materials, colors, and options that protect your paint and the interior, too. Live where it's sunny all the time? Lucky. Covercraft dash covers and sunscreens are the best. Got pets? Messy kids? Messy in-laws? Or just messy friends? Covercraft seat covers are the perfect fit and the perfect solution for keeping your seats looking new. And don't forget their custom fit floor mats and trunk liners. They are a must-have for all your vehicles. Your cars, truck, van, or whatever you drive will say thank you. And I've got a deal for you. During January 2020, you can get 10% off plus free shipping on all Covercraft products. That's right. Go to Covercraft.com and use the code YEAH120. That's Y-E-A-H-120 at checkout. That's Covercraft.com and use the code YEAH120 at checkout. Edelbrock has been the name in automotive performance since 1938. Edelbrock designs and builds thousands of of the finest automotive performance products right here in the USA for both street and track. From their AVS2 carburetors to V6 superchargers, if it's more power you crave, Edelbrock delivers. Let's talk superchargers. Whether it's an application-specific system or a universal fit, their precision-made assemblies come in multiple stages for a wide variety of makes and models. Their V6 superchargers are dyno-tested and ensure the perfect fit and maximum horsepower torque Plus added boost. you get huge power gains. I mean huge power gains. Quality construction you can trust and backed by decades of knowledge, Edelbrock is a brand that provides you with proven performance. And I've got a deal for you. This January 2020, you can get 10% off, 10% off if you use the code CARSYA at checkout. Just go to edelbrock.com and use CARSYA, all one word, at checkout and get 10% off. Tell them Mark at CARSYA sent you. That's edelbrock.com, checkout code CARSYA for your 10% off. Eleanor, welcome to Cars Yeah. Are you buckled up and ready for a fun ride? I think so. (laughs) I think so. Well, I'll promise to keep it between the rails, although you're going to be doing most of the driving today. So uh, here we go. Buckle up. Uh, So, Eleanor, what I'd love for you to do first is say hello to the Cars Yeah audience and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. Hello there. My name is Eleanor Segura. I am the digital production editor at Automobile Magazine. Or in addition to my production duties, I also contribute as a writer and a photographer. I started out in auto parts and carved my way into automotive journalism. Well, this is very cool. I, I love the fact that uh, you you had mentioned to me in our pre-show chat that you're the only woman editor there, which I think is really cool. And we'll talk about that a little bit as we flow through. But before we get into some of the questions, would you share maybe one thing about yourself that maybe most people don't know about you? Sure. Um, most people do not know, but I have a twin sister. Oh, and that we are we are not um, identical. Well, that's pretty cool. Now, I've heard 
And I've had friends who are twins that have very special bonds with their twin. Are you that way with your sister? Do you guys kind of finish each other uh, each other's senses and do you kind of have feelings and vibes about each other even when you're not together? Well, we don't I wouldn't say we like fin it um finish each other's sentences, but I would say that we do have a lot of the similar like taste and things. Personality and, like, traits. Um, yeah. Sort of. And we also find uh, you know, we anything that we find humorous, I think we both agree on. We have uh, a strong bond. We don't live in this. We don't. We both live in different cities, but even when we're together, it's like, you know, we're we're still like, I don't know, best friends. Even if we don't yeah, talk for yeah. a while. Well, that's very cool. So, when you were in school, did you ever trick teachers? It was hard to because we're not identical, so there was no way. Oh, I always right. looked yeah. more like okay. her cousin, or you know, like you know, <laughs> her little sister. But I never. Yeah, that was not going to happen. Not something you could do. Well, that's very cool. Well, that's really neat. Thanks for sharing that with us. Well, listen, as we continue on your journey, I always like to ask my guests for a success quote or a mantra. This is some kind of saying that perhaps has been instrumental in forming your life. It's a nice way to get the inspirational tires turning a little bit here on Cars. Yeah. So Eleanor, take the wheel. Don't let the possibility of failure stop you from pursuing things that are completely foreign to you. Do your best and be reasonable with your expectations, and avoid seeking validation. When everyone else is going in one direction, you need to explore a different path. Nice. I like that. How have you incorporated that into your life there at Automobile and your your life around cars? Well, I could definitely say that specifically with the content I have been producing for Automobile, it's been a little bit more uh, like female-focused. And it's been more toward like knowing a little bit more about the person behind the wheel versus knowing more about the car. And these stories are, they're not just unique, but they're also special. And I actually have received letters in the mail um, specifically with a story that I recently um, put together. It was a, it was a feature story with uh, um, women who drive Porsches. And I had someone from Pennsylvania write me a letter and he included a photo of his wife. And in that photo, um, she was standing next to a Porsche that she has owned for 45 years now. So that was really cool. It's that type of stuff that I'm saying, you know, I didn't know what would be of what the results of this was going to be. Because when I started this, um, it it was officially called um, Lady Owned and Driven Porsches. I just started the project as like a fun little thing to do. And I didn't think it was going to grow as big as it it did. That was just one person I heard from. And I'm just only like imagining like how many other people who did not write to me, you know, that they, they could relate to this story or something about it made them feel a certain way. Yeah. You know, you and I were talking a little bit in our pre-show chat today about women. And I've interviewed a couple hundred women now on cars. Yeah. And I, I love having women on the show because, Women are making enormous strides into the automotive arena. And Mariana Small, who introduced me to you as a guest on my show uh, last month, and she's introduced me to some really interesting women in the automotive industry. I'm really glad to hear that Automobile Magazine is letting you do this because I really believe women make a massive amount of the decisions in car buying in most families, I believe. And I joked with you a little bit about uh, you know, if you're a smart man and you've been married for a long time, it's because you don't just go out and buy cars and not talk with your spouse about it. Uh, you discuss it. And uh, not that you hopefully don't have to ask permission, but I think uh, just discussing it is a smart thing to do. That's how I've been married for a long time. Are you seeing that trend as well with your readership? Is there a way for you to identify, let's say, over the past years, how the readership gender has changed or grown? For automobile? I don't, unfortunately, I don't know if these are women or men who are reading um, based on metrics, but I do know, I do, however, know that the the stories that I have done that feature women have been performing a lot better than like I even expected them to. And it's just showing that maybe people want to know more about what women are up to and, you know, in the automotive industry or, you know, just car enthusiasts in general. And I meet these women all the time. I find that no one's really like reaching out to them. 
and asking them, you know, about their car or like their experience. I think that's just something that we need to start tapping into because that market is there. We, we need to go after these women. I think it's really important to the automotive industry, too. I think, And I think they're realizing that. I have had a past guest, Kathy Droz, who's been on the show, great woman who trains car salesmen, specifically women, to sell to other women specifically because men, sometimes we don't figure women out very well. <laughs> we think we do, but we don't. And uh, the fact that she trains women to sell to women, I think it's great. And last year, I had my first season of Cars Yeah! Television, and two of the 13 shows, the guests were women. One was a curator at the California Automotive Museum, and uh, the other runs a uh, Porsche dismantling service, Sarah DeCarmen. Oh, right. I know uh, her. So, I've uh, met her before. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. So uh, very cool. Well, let's uh, kind of expand on this a little bit and talk about what has you excited and fired up about your career. Uh, we're into 2020 and it's the new year and it's exciting. It's a time for refreshing thoughts and new things. What has you excited and fired up in the new year about automobile? As I said, I am the digital production editor. That's my official role. I am going to have the opportunity to actually transition from a production editor to, into a full-time writer. And that's what I'm really excited about because I, I would love to do more stories on women and I want to be clear on one thing. This isn't like some sort of feminist movement or, you know, men versus women. It's more about sharing the spotlight with women, because I am also interested in pursuing st stories that feature men as well. Oh, very cool. Well, that's exciting. Well, I think uh, all of us are looking forward to learning more about women in the industry as the new year moves on. Uh, I don't know why you wouldn't want to know that. I think it's fantastic. When did you realize that? Doing what you're doing as a career is the right thing for you. Maybe three or four years because I've been at Automobile almost six years now. I came on as the production editor and maybe like three years into that, I started realizing, you know, if I don't step it up and, you know, do something that requires a bit more of, of, of both creativity and advanced skills, I'm probably going to end up leaving because what else could I do here? I just volunteered to write a review on a car and it, and it turned out great. And from there, it just sort of took off. This was, I had no experience and I just wanted to give it a try. I think it was like an infinity like wagon. And I just did a, a feature story where I took it around town and I went to some restaurant and that was about it. And from there, it just took off. And this was like a little over two years ago. You know, you just dropped a huge value bomb for people out there that are new in their career. Maybe they're young, maybe they're old, maybe they're into a new thing. And that is raise your hand and try something new. Get out of your comfort zone. Um, I, I ran a business for many years and I would have people come to me every year and they want to pay a raise. And I would talk to them and say, well, what are you doing different now than you were doing a year ago? Have you grown in some way? Have you stepped forward? Have you done something new? something different, added value to the business. And for those people that could say yes, there was definitely a career advancement for them, whether it be a different role or money. And for those who said no, I say, well, why not? You know, why should I pay you more for doing the exact same job you've been doing for a whole year? You've been doing it fine, but if you really want to do more and earn more, step out of your comfort zone. So kudos to you for raising your hand and trying something different and look at where I got you. So bravo. Very nice. And at the beginning, I was actually completely opposed to writing because I thought, I don't know anything about cars. I don't have any experience in writing. And I was really not ever thinking of giving it a try. And then finally, I just kind of built up, you know, the confidence to do it. And I, I did it. And ever since then, I've been contributing as a writer. Even though I haven't been doing it full time, I've been able to do some really cool stuff. Yeah. And now you will be. That's very neat. What's the favorite thing you do as a writer in your career? What gets you really excited every day about what you do? All I could say is just the ability to, you know, write a story that not only just reaches like an audience, but that has, you know, the potential to have an impact on someone who's reading it. Some add some inspiration. To right. Well, that's what we're all about here. Well, let's talk a little bit about a challenge or even a failure that you face along the way. And I ask this question not to drum up a negative time in your life, but more importantly, to share with others what that learning lesson was and how you came out of that situation in a positive way and moved forward. So kind of take us back to a time that was a bit of a challenge for you and tell us how you worked through that. 
In the early 2000s, I was 100% convinced that I needed to become a professional photographer. And I enrolled in one of the top schools of for photography at the time, Brooks Institute in Santa Barbara. I wanted to follow in the footsteps of Mary Ellen Mark and and Annie Liebowitz, both who are world-class photographers with iconic work. Unfortunately, in less than a year, I dropped out of Brooks due to the ridiculously expensive tuition. Years later, I transferred to Cal State Fullerton and graduated with a bachelor's in photo communications. Today, I'm not a pro photographer. However, I have kept photography around as a hobby. And I believe that photography is a powerful tool that's also important for um, communication. And is it's just one of those art forms that's always going to have a special place in my heart. So the way I've been able to use this today is with my writing. I supplement, I shoot 90% of my own photography for my stories. Uh, that's one way that I turned this in, this failure into a success. A, a, I would say a small um, success. Well, I'd say a big success. And, you know, kudos to you, Brooks. I wanted to go to school there as well, way, way, way back. And I actually drove up there from Southern California, did an interview, talked with some people there. They said, yeah, we'd love to have you here. And looking at that tuition, even back then, it was insanely expensive. And I remember sitting with one of their counselors. I said, well, what are the job opportunities around here so I can you know, pay for this? And they said, well, you're going to be way too busy to have a job. You, you can't work and go to school here, not at Brooks. How am I going to do this? Well, your parents are going to have to pay for it. And I go, no, that's going to happen. I got to pay for my own schooling. And I drove the long two and a half hour drive back home pretty dejected. Because I went, I can't afford to go there. That was kind of like what I wanted to do. Now, I found another path. I ended up in college and graduated, but uh, like you did too. But yeah, that can be a challenge uh, for people. But you know, you're a great story here where you found another way. You figured out another way. And here you are today using your photography and skills to do what you want to do to make a living and have fun. So very nice story. Let's take a short break and uh, say hello to a couple of our sponsors here that make this possible. And we'll be right back. My favorite collector car magazine is Keith Martin's Sports Car Market. I've been a subscriber for decades. Sports Car Market is the Wall Street Journal for the enthusiast and the collector. It's your monthly must read whether you dream of owning a collector car, have two cars, or 200. Sports Car Market has been around for 31 years and it's filled with valuable articles, intelligent write-ups, and the latest auction sales. Go to sportscarmarket.com and subscribe today. Plus, you'll get the exclusive SEM guide to restoration shops included for free. At checkout, use the code CARSYEAH and receive a 50% discount on your digital subscription. It's an exclusive offer from me here at Cars Yeah. I'm Mark Green, and I love Sports Car Market Magazine. Are you looking for a way to get your products or services into the ears of thousands of automotive enthusiasts around the globe? I can help. This is Mark Green here at Cars Yeah. And I'd be honored to be an influencer and ambassador for your brand in a unique and personal way. Five days a week, thousands of subscribers and listeners enjoy the Cars Yeah! podcast and website. Contact me today and I'll show you how at mark at carsyeah.com or connect with me through the Cars Yeah! website at carsyeah.com. All right, we're back. And I wondered if you'd share a story with me that... uh, Kind of instigated this passion that you have for cars. Is there a pivotal moment in your life when you knew, you know what, the car industry is where I want to be? Well, in all truthfulness, I don't identify myself as a hardcore car enthusiast, but a pivotal car moment in my life, though, was when I purchased a brand new um, 2006 Volkswagen GTI. It was the first time, it was, a, it was the first time I truly cared about cars. And I went on several road trips in this car, and I really started to enjoy uh, the act of driving, especially night drives on my own. Yeah, well, those are cool cars. I love those little compact hatchbacks that have a little bit of extra power. The GTIs are really cool. The R's are really cool, too. Uh, But we had a GLI when we were first married, my wife and I, way back. Uh, So that was kind of like the GTI version of the four-door, because we figured we're going to have kids. We needed a little bigger car. but. What a fun car to start with. And, you know, we chatted about this a little bit before. I always ask my guests about the first 
really special vehicle they had in their lives. And you had expressed to me a concern that you weren't sure if you had an answer. Now, you told me you bought a Camry as your first car, but this GTI sounds like the answer to that question. Why would you not include that? I don't know. I just <laughs> I just felt like, I don't know. I, I don't know that I thought it was anything special. I just feel like it was just the car that I feel like I really got into cars at that, and when I was in behind the wheel of that specific car. Yeah, well, you you threw a little trick at me here. Yeah, I, I, a GTI is special, Eleanor. <laughs> I promise you, it is. It's very cool. Uh, but to track back a little bit, because you asked what was the pivotal moment, I don't know that there was a one that just told me, you know, like I'm going to end up working in in automotive journalism. But it's kind of funny because I did spend like almost eight years in auto parts and now I'm here yeah. working for a car magazine. So it's like, maybe I didn't know it then, but I know it now. Yeah. It was just kind of bubbling up in the background right. a little bit. Yeah. That's why you tricked me with that, that comment. Cause I'm thinking, wait a minute. I knew you worked in the car parts industry forever. And now you work at automobile magazine. You got to have a passion for cars <laughs> in there somewhere. I think you do. Either most that definitely. or I'm in denial. <laughs> Well, that could be too. Could be too. Well, here's a very introspective question for you. If you woke up tomorrow and you were a car, you were manifested as a car, not what you want to be, but how you perceive yourself as a particular vehicle, what would Eleanor be and why? That's not an easy question, especially working for a car magazine, but it, I would be somewhere between, I think, a Lexus LC500 and a Porsche 911 Targa 4 GTS. Okay. Now, those are two very different cars, which means you're a multifaceted lady, I think, is the way I would interpret that. These Tell cars us a little bit more why. Because these cars say stylish, attractive, intelligent, and powerful. I love it. Fun cars. Both of those are fun cars for sure. Although I kind of like Porsches a little bit more. So I'm going to I'm gonna say you're a Porsche today if you'll let me do that. Okay. I'm fine with that. <laughs> there you go. All right, Eleanor. Well, we're ending what I call the last lap. I'm going to fire off a series of questions and ask you to give our listeners some quick blips of that Porsche throttle. So here we go. Would you share one of your personal habits that you believe has contributed to your successes over the years? Well, I thought about this and I couldn't really narrow it down to one. I would say um, definitely one of them is waking up early and being open to the possibility of failure. Because if you're always expecting that everything you do is going to be a a success, then you're not going to be open to trying new things. That just kind of puts you in in a box and then you become like a person who's just complacent. Way too safe. You know, two great things there. I'll tell you, I've had many very successful people on this show who have told me getting up early and taking advantage of those extra couple of hours every day has made a change of enormous positivity in their life. So kudos to you for doing that. And also the failure is even more important. I had a guest on the show years ago that said her goal was at the for her January resolutions, New Year's resolutions, was to fail at least 100 times in the new year. <laughs> That's a good goal. And yeah, you know, because it meant she's going to try a hundred plus things she'd never done before and try to make them right. And most of us, when we start new things, we do fail at first. And unfortunately, some people never try it again. So those are two great, great habits. How about if I could wave a magic wand and arrange for you to sit down and have a drink or a meal with anyone in the automotive industry, being a writer, this would be an important one, living or deceased, who would it be? Adam Carolla. Oh. Okay, well, that shouldn't be too hard. He he lives in the same city where you are. He's here in the greater Los Angeles area. So, uh, yeah, he's been a guest here on the Cars. Yeah, I'd be happy to connect you with Adam Carolla. I'd be happy to do that. So, yeah, he's yeah, a very just interesting to, guy. Just to mention, one of my really good friends would be so jealous. He's like a huge fan of his podcast. <laughs> well, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> yeah, he's he's he was a guy podcasting back when nobody even knew what podcasting was. Um, I'll tell you a little thing about Adam Carolla that you share with him. And he told me this on my interview. And you listeners that missed that talk with Adam, you can go back and find him on my website. All my past guests are listed there with their shows. He said, you know what, Mark? I get up early and I just start moving my legs and I don't stop. And the other thing that he shared was he's not afraid to try new things. He's always thinking and doing something a little different and outside of his comfort zone. I mean, if you think about his career, 
Most people go, oh, huge success. Well, lots of not so successful endeavors. TV shows that didn't last, different kinds of podcasts, different things that didn't Love last. Love Line, you know The Man Show. To try things. Yeah. Yeah. All those things that people go, oh, that's right. That's not around anymore. But he tries lots of different things. So I think you uh, you may not know it. You share some uh, very good attributes with Adam Carolla, but happy to connect you with him. If I was going to ask you this, what's the best automotive advice you've ever received? What would it be? Read a lot, tell it like you see it, and don't buy into what everyone else is saying. <laughs> very nice. How about a tip for our listeners that has made you successful in your business? Um, and this would be something... That is a go-to for you, maybe like a website, an app, a supplier, a person, kind of a, a resource, if you will. Well, the only one I can think of in like recent weeks, like that I've actually used, there's this app called Meetup, and what it is is you're able to connect with other people who either have similar interests or there, there's like a hobby that they have that they want to meet with other people to go out and do it with. Like, for example, photography is one of them. And I recently attended a workshop that was completely free. It was a great experience and I learned a lot. And it was an all-day workshop at Sammy's Camera. So I highly recommend uh, that app called Meetup. Meetup. Very cool. That's a great resource. Uh, How about a book? Is there a book that you've read that you think our listeners would really enjoy reading? I'm really disappointed in the fact that I haven't been reading this this year like I have in previous years, but I do have a collection of my own personal uh, books that I really like. And one of them is Pathways to Bliss by Joseph Campbell. What do you like about that book? It's just a book about personal growth and, you know, ways of transitioning from one way of how you think you are into what you could potentially be. That sounds like an awesome book. I'll remind our listeners, that you can find all these resources Eleanor has been so kind to share with us today on her very own Cars Yeah show notes page. And there's a great place on the Cars Yeah website called Guest Recommended Books where this book, Pathways to Bliss by Joseph Campbell, will be listed. I even make it really easy for a quick click to buy. So check it out. Let's talk to our sponsors real quick and we'll be back for the checkered flag question. You take care of your cars. But who takes care of your investments? Tune-ups aren't just for engines. Updating your financial plan is important, too. Your GPS may take you from A to B, but it won't help you on the road to financial freedom. For that, you need a good co-pilot and a very trusted advisor. Chris Kimball, CFP, is just the man for the job. He'll guide you down that road without driving you crazy. For over 25 years, Chris has helped people just like you and me with their financial planning and investments. With a master's degree in financial services, he is eminently qualified, and he's a car guy too. Learn more at chrisvkimble.com or call 866-ON-A-PLAN. Securities through Money Concepts Capital Corp. Member FINRA SIPC. CK Financial Services is not affiliated with Money Concepts Capital Corp. All right, Eleanor, we are back, and uh, it's time for, like I said, the checkered flag. This last question could be a bit of a doozy. I'm going to buy you a very cool collector car today, something fun, not an everyday driver, but something to enjoy up and down the California coast there to park in your garage. But there are some rules to my game, since I'm going to be writing the check, that you have to abide by. One is you can't sell it to buy a bunch of other toys with. You have to drive it. I don't want a garage queen living at your house. But here's the kicker. It's the only one cool collector car that you can own. So you need to choose very wisely, my friend. A 1970 Mercedes-Benz B11 concept. Oh, my gosh. Uh, You're not going to make this easy for me, are you? The going doors, (laughs) the exotic design, the luxurious interior, and it's just a classic car with a modern appearance. It's radical and non-conforming. That would be the car that would be in my garage. That would be, you know, this is very interesting because uh, you're a younger woman and a 1970, I mean, I'm not surprised you don't know about this car, but you're the first person out of 1,458 people that has suggested that car, which makes you pretty unique because I get a lot of the same kinds of requests. Uh, sometimes they're they're unique and different, but that one is really unique and different. Have you seen that vehicle in person? I have not, but I suspect that pretty soon I will have that opportunity to do that. 
And where do you think that's going to happen? Are you going to the Mercedes Museum? I might. Oh, <laughs> you are going to die. That place is, I'm telling you, that is one. I've been to lots of museums around the world. That place is one of the coolest museums ever. And it starts from when you walk into the entry lobby, which is this giant cylinder, and you take an elevator all the way to the top. And as the elevator is going up, you look out at these images being projected on the curved walls inside the building in front of you. And when you get to the top, the doors open. And you know what the first thing you see there is? They're not that car. No. There's a horse standing, yes, sitting there. And then you start to work through the history of Mercedes as you walk down this big cylinder. But yeah, you'll see that car there. That's pretty cool. Well, I can't wait to hear your reaction when you get to go to that museum. It is incredible. It's one of the best car museums, I think, in the world just because of the way they walk you through the history of Mercedes-Benz and the automobile. So very, very cool. I love it. Well, Eleanor, you've taken me on a really wonderful ride today. I want to thank you for spending some time with me and for sharing your journey with the Cars Yeah audience into this new year. Could you offer us a little parting piece of wisdom or guidance before you drive off into the sunset in that beautiful 1970 Mercedes-Benz C11 concept car? In a world where people seek approval or validation, there's nothing wrong with being the underdog. Great words of advice. What's the best way for people to follow along with what you're doing there at Automobile? Our website, I would I would appreciate if people give my stories a read and they can find them at automobilemag.com. You know, I'd also offer a suggestion to readers. If you're reading things online or you get the magazine in the mail, however you read it, reach out to the writers. Let them know what you think, even if you don't like it and you think they're totally full of bunk, let them know. Give them some feedback because as a publisher of this podcast, I really appreciate it when people reach out to me and either say, hey, great job, or I didn't like that one, (laughs) or hey, how about if you try this? Uh, Because that's how we grow as uh, publishers, producers, editors, all the things, creative people. So make sure you do reach out, and I encourage you to follow along uh, with Eleanor, her writers, and all her colleagues there at a great publication and online forum, Automobile. So listeners, again, you can find everything Eleanor has been so kind to share with us today on her very own Cars Yeah show notes page. Just go to CarsYow.com, type in Eleanor, E-L-E-O-N-O-R, Segura, S-E-G-U-R-A is how you spell her name. I always seem to have a little challenge with the spelling of your name. It's very unique, very different, uh, but it's a wonderful, wonderful name. Thank you, Eleanor, for being so generous today with your time your expertise, and for sharing your experiences with our listeners. This has been great. Until you and I talk again, I'll see you down the road. Thanks, Mark. You're welcome. Hey, Mark Green here from Cars Yeah! Did you know you can now see me on the Cars Yeah! TV show? It's a weekly visit to some of my past Cars Yeah! podcast guests, and I take you along for the ride. You go behind the garage door and into their lives, their businesses, and you get to see what makes them successful. With tens of millions of viewers, Cars Yeah! TV is making its mark. Cars Yeah! TV is available on MAV TV and Lucas Oil Racing TV. You'll find MAV TV on Direct TV. Fubo TV, Fios by Verizon, or you can stream it through Lucas Oil Racing Television online. And they said I only had a face for podcasting. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah! Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah!